Hello guys, welcome to my channel, this is Max. If this is the first time and you've been lured in by the thumbnail, uh, what we're doing here is a teaching massage, teaching the best technique to get rid of pain and to help your client to get the best performance in the gym, in the sport and in everyday life. Today we're gonna work on muscle testing. This is gonna be really an uh, assessment, assessment uh, video where we're gonna check the muscle, we're gonna check the joint, and we're gonna try to solve some of the problem of my client. We are just um, test uh, the infraspinatus, that is one of the rotator cuff. And now we are checking the serratus. Serratus is a muscle that uh, most of the time you can find weak in athletes. And uh, it's really painful, as you can see. Uh, we are trying to activate it because the test fail. And we're gonna see the same test now. Uh, muscle testing, it's uh, pretty difficult to, to do correctly because uh, it depends how you press the client. You can, for example, jam the joint and make it look like uh, she's weak, or you can change the angle and make it look like she's strong. So you have to try to be always uh, in the same position and to um, press perpendicular to the uh, joint you're trying and the muscle you're trying to evaluate. The, in this case, the, serrat the serrato was uh, still weak and then we, make it, we made it strong. Now we're gonna work on the, on the neck and on the extensor. Uh, the first one we're gonna check are the, the left extensor, the upper extensor. So you go from down up and you've, uh, we just find out that we are strong. And then we're gonna check the lower extensor that you go uh, pressing in the front while she try to resist. Now you can see some work on the scaling, scaling that uh, we found very weak. And uh, when we find a muscle that is weak, we have to activate it. So to activate the muscle, we can use uh, any technique, but I like to use an um, active release technique called ART. And what you do, you pin and stretch the, uh, in this case, uh, the infraspinatus, uh, sorry, the, the scalene, and you try to open up, you're trying to break that fiber, you try to uh, recreate that uh, um, hydration in between fibers so that the muscle can function perfectly. And you can see now I'm pressing and see the muscle was pretty strong and reactive. So this is amazing, especially for uh, athletes that play rugby or football player that need a strong neck, that need to be able to uh, resist uh, a concussion, resist uh, to be tackled. So now we are uh, checking the SAM mastoideo, muscle is strong, she has no problem. And we're gonna move uh, somewhere else. We're gonna now uh, put the client in the supine position and we're gonna start working on the psoas. Psoas, that is uh, one of the most important muscle to check. So um, it's very often a muscle that is uh, shut down because it's always tense. Imagine how tense is this muscle. We always use it every time we work. It's the main uh, muscle that uh, allows us, um, it's a flexor, so it allows us to, to put the legs in the front when we work. And uh, we find that in, the, in this case, that is pretty weak. As you can see, she failed the test. We try again, we ask for one, two, three, and then we try. So the test was weak. So what are we gonna do? If the test was weak, we're gonna go and start well, first we're gonna check the other one. And even if this one was pretty easy, when there is this rebound, uh, this, you know, this lagging of, uh, of contraction, it means that the test is, we, I'm, I'm gonna, I like to show different angle to, to show how this uh, muscle testing work. So when you, when you work uh, on the on the psoas, you want to watch out that uh, uh, the client doesn't uh, um, use uh, the tibialis so to to do the um, to do to help with the test. So we can bang on top of the psoas. This is a, a way to activate, 
or we can even uh, go directly into the belly and try to release, uh, try to activate the muscle. Remember, this can be really painful. And one thing, you can really reach the psoas. Yes, there are so many um, organs in the front. So when, uh, when you work on this, try to not push too much. The best way is, as a, is a, to bend the knees and try to reach next to the uh, um, like next to the abs, and now you will see how that activation of the sauce make the sauce stronger. See, she was uh, agreeing with the face, say yes, that works. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. This is a great reset for the for the sauce. Remember, the sauce, the glutes, and the diaphragm are the main uh, muscle. Um, that that need to be activated uh, to have a strong uh, component in your fitness. If this muscle are weak, you're gonna lag everywhere else. Your performance is gonna is not gonna be top notch. And now uh, we restabilize, uh, we uh, reactivate uh, the source. Now we're gonna check the quad, especially the rect fem. In this case. Uh, she was weak even in the rack fam. So what do you do? You work on top of the patella. You try to activate uh, the patella up and all the attachment of the quad. This is great before you do a squat, for example, before you do your lunge. You have, uh, if you know that uh, you generally have uh, a weak um, quad, you want to activate them so that you are sure that. Uh, um, your performance is at a maximum level. And now we'll check again. It was still a little bit, it was better, but it wasn't. So she need to work uh, that quads. She need to work more on that quads because as you can see, we activate them, but they're no 100%. Here again, <laughs> was like failing. She felt like, um, uh, it feels bad to when when the, when you do a muscle test and you receive a muscle test. It feels really bad to see that your muscles are weak. It doesn't matter how strong you are. Sometimes in certain position, in certain angle, your muscle just don't work. They just don't. Uh, they're not active. They're not responsive. So you need to do something to to create. And uh, uh, really. Uh, I always, my, my techniques that comes all from, I stand on the shoulder of the giant. If you want to really check a, a great way to, uh, to test muscle, you should go for RPR. Uh, I, I just take the, 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 the second level. It's just amazing what they do with, um, with reflexive performance reset. And uh, now we are testing uh, the, the glutes. I, I learned this from Cole Dietz, really a great coach. And uh, so we just see that the glutes are weak. So what do you do when the glutes are weak? Uh, the glutes, as I say, is called considered zone one. So it's, um, it's really important that you find uh, uh, a way to, to restore this muscle. So you can first uh, work on the arch this uh, reset helps to activate uh, the big toe and these are the reset for the glutes so if the glutes are weak you go up here why up here because uh, this is the first extensor of the of the kid when you're a kid when you're a baby this is the first muscle that uh, are be active first extensor that are being activated when you l when you extend your head to go looking for some food or to see what's going on when you're a kid. So all these are connected by the back line to your glutes and see how it becomes stronger. So you activate these two muscles and then if that doesn't happen, you ask the client to, to work and to make uh, the toe, the big toe stronger. We, we talk all the time how it's important to have a big and strong uh, big toe and see how the butt become super strong all of the sudden. So remember guys, when you work out, uh, you want to always activate the big toe. You do a squat, you activate a big toe. You do a bench press, you activate a big toe. So super important 
to uh, do your PR and to increase uh, the capacity uh, of uh, activation of the glute and the glute mid. So again, we see some, uh, some work and see how strong the glutes become. This is, for me, this is uh, just amazing. And, uh, when, and now we're going to move uh, to some um, sacrum bending test. So we, we work on a muscle, now we're gonna work on a joint. So we move into the joint. So this test is a classical um, osteopathic test. As you can see, we find on the right side that, uh, um, we find on the right side that it wasn't really, it was higher, so wasn't really moving and here we're gonna do stock test and even here we find uh, that the uh, see uh, on the side on the right side there was there is some blockage I'm gonna show you I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in slow motion so you can see this is really important when she elevate the thumb should go down because uh, you have uh, uh, the move, the joint should move so that uh, the thumb should go down like, like it does in this side. Can you see the difference? I hope you can see the difference, guys. That means there is a blockage that. And you can see there is a functional longer leg on the right side. So we pretty much find that uh, the problem is on the left. Sorry, on the right. Sorry, the problem is uh, uh, actually on the on the right, and there is some restriction even in the in the leg. We can check even on the um, on the knee if there is a good spring. So all these tests help you to understand what's going on in the um, in the sacrum and the in the sacroiliac joint. So I was feeling some restriction even in the sacrum. Here we are trying to release um, the ankle. It was difficult. She was uh, trying to maintain. Uh, <laughs> she was tense. She didn't want me to um, release the ankle joint, the subtalar. some um, mobilization of the leg or the femoral coxofemoral joint and then we're gonna do the same on the other side and here the correction So, uh, actually, the correction is just in the position. Here you will see. I even try the correction, and as soon as I press, here just happened the correction. I didn't do almost anything. The, um, the sacroiliac joint was ready to pop already. And here the second correction. I want to show to you how his, um, the correction has happened. See now the length of the foot is the same. So we achieve what we want to achieve. And that's good. That's what we're trying to do. So we're going to work now on the thoracic. Oh, guys, I didn't tell you. I have a, a Patreon where I give a deep tissue massage, mostly to plus-size women. And um, it's mostly ASMR. 
and I have a lot to subscribe. I think uh, you're going to like it. If you like my models, it's a totally different. It's a, this one is more therapeutic. The other one is more, you know, spicy, let's say it like that. And uh, after we correct the trunk, we're going to start working on the neck. Some correction of the T1, T2. And here again, T1, T2 correction. And now we are working uh, on the neck. We are um, doing some active release technique. She was uh, complaining of really tight uh, muscle, especially the trapezius. Sometimes, guys, when you do massages and and you want to work on your client. Sometimes you need to go hard, but sometimes you got to feel what's the vibe of your client. Does she or he uh, enjoy more a relaxing massage where you can still release the muscle or you want to go really hard? So you just have to um, be flexible and understand the real need of the client. So I want here, we are to the end, I show you how is, uh, is done the work. So the legs are the same. Feet, uh, the feet are in the same position. Guys, so we have like the maleolus that is in the same position. And leave a so comment. Uh, we have the really sauce that is working like fine. Com comments working on the, fine. On the massage. Glutes are working. Everything is working fine. How you and feel? Uh, yeah. Check my tissue <laughs> lover <laughs> Patreon. Good. Yes. <laughs> good, very good. Okay. <laughs>